Hey, what's up guys? It's Smart Van here. I'm sitting in the front today because this video is all about audio. Specifically, replacing the crappy stock speakers that come with the Ram ProMaster City with something aftermarket. There's gonna be three sections to this video. First, I'm gonna talk about why you might wanna go through the install process. In the second step, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did step-by-step step to do this install. And then finally, I'm gonna talk about what I think about the install. So, what's good and what I feel like is still lacking. So first off, why bother with this effort? So if you've ever sat in the ProMaster City, you will find that the audio leaves something to be desired. It's a pretty common complaint on forums as well, where people say that the audio sounds terrible. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at what it takes to install new speakers into the Ram ProMaster City. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is use your panel remover tools, which are super handy, highly recommend them if you have a van you wanna work on. And you're just gonna remove this panel that sits over the side mirror adjustment knob. Next, you're going to remove two screws. They're just Phillips screws off the side of the door. Next, you're gonna to wanna to use a screwdriver or pliers to remove these two covers. This part actually took me an embarrassing amount of time to do, so let's just fast forward through all that. But ultimately, I do get them removed. Once you remove those two clips, you will find that there are two T40 Torx screws that you have to remove. And they are in there really tight. They're locked in with thread locker. And I ended up having to go and buy a little extension for my socket wrench. But I'm able to get them off. Up next, it's a simple matter of removing these two screws and then you can just pop off this entire control panel with your panel remover tools. Pulling up will reveal that this is attached on with by two points. Uh, the first is the electrical harness, which allows you to lower your windows. And the second point is the door handle, which is kind of a complex mechanism. But if you can see here, it comes off in two pieces. So once that's done, we have access to one more Torx screw that we can just remove like we did before. All right, so with that out of the way, we just go around the side of the door panel and we just pry right underneath each clip. Boom, just like that, we got the door off. All that's left now is to remove three more bolts and this metal piece comes right off. Now we can finally turn our attention to the speaker itself. It's held in place by rivets, so this is gonna be a little bit annoying. So using an 11 64th drill bit, go ahead and drill into each individual rivet until the head pops right off. Also note that this is the point of no return, so if you make it this far, you're gonna to have to finish the job. So once you do the first rivet, you can go ahead and repeat that on the remaining two. And with the rivets off, you just pull back and you can take the speaker right out. So go ahead and put that speaker aside. Next, go ahead and just pull back at this foam covering and remove it completely from the door. You can go ahead and trash it because we won't be needing it from now on. All right, next we're gonna prepare the door panel for Dynamat. You'll want to wipe all the surfaces down with isopropyl alcohol to remove any grime or dust. This will make it possible for the Dynamat to adhere to the surface of the door. And now for the fun part. I've already cut some of the Dynamat out into strips, and now I'm applying it onto my door surface with the roller. If you want any details as to how this is done, you should check out any of the number of YouTube videos on this subject. Instead, I just wanted to mention why I chose Dynamat in particular. After all, Dynamat is the brand name in this area, so it's kind of expensive. And there are other noise reducing materials out there as well that are much cheaper. However, since I figured that I'm saving money by doing this install myself, I might as well treat myself to the best. Also note that you don't technically need this much Dynamat, and in fact a little bit goes a long way. But more coverage means better results, and especially for the driver's side, I really want quieter road noise. Once complete, I have a layer of Dynamat on both the inside and outside of the door panel. All right, let's shift gears a little bit and move our attention towards the tweeter. Pull down on the weather stripping 
and go ahead and pry back the A pillar. Inside you'll find the stock tweeter and a power cord you can disconnect. Using pliers and a screwdriver, pull back the tabs one by one and pull out the tweeter until it comes loose. And with that we finally have our stock speaker and tweeter. Hold on to that tweeter for now though, we're gonna need it later. Now I figure since we have the old and the new speaker side by side, it would be interesting to do a little comparison between the two. Something else that's really noticeable is that the stock speakers are very lightweight. Here it's weighing 262 grams, whereas the aftermarket speakers weigh twice as much. Look at that. Alright, so based on that unit test over there, it seems like these speakers are going to be awesome once we get them in. First though, we're going to want to strip some wire and attach them to the speaker leads. Remember that the larger of the two leads is the positive terminal. Next, go ahead and solder the wires right onto the terminal and use heat shrink to wrap them up when you're done. There are plenty of really great soldering tutorials on YouTube if you need any help. On the other side, I crimped on two quick disconnect terminals. For the tweeter, you're going to modify this base mount which comes with the speakers. Pull three L-shaped tabs off, leaving only the flat tabs on. Clip off any excess material. Next, we need to replicate the tabs that are on the stock tweeters into your aftermarket mount. I did this by drilling three holes and then using pliers to remove the excess material. Alright, so to save some effort, I chose to reuse the connector on the stock tweeters. The downside though is that this involves totally destroying the stock tweeters, so if you want to keep them, you should find another way to do the connection. Remember that the flat side is negative and the bent side is positive. Solder the wires on, being extremely careful not to create any shorts since these pins are super close together. When done, I used a combination of heat shrink and tessa tape to make sure that there was no exposed metal. We're finally ready to mount it back in. Add some Tessa tape to the bottom edge of the speaker hole just to make sure that there's no exposed aluminum surface. These are the parts I used for my bracketing solution. First, line the new speakers up to the existing mount. Next, using a 1064th drill bit, drill four holes into the existing plastic. For the final assembly, I added a neoprene washer to reduce vibration, as well as a lock nut. So in the end, the final order of parts would be screw, speaker, the neoprene washer, the plastic mount, the lock nut, and then the hex nut. Now the speaker is finally on. Up next, let's make that electrical connection. With your wire cutters, remove the existing connector. And then crimp on some quick attach connectors to match the ones that we used on the speaker. Now normally, I would prefer to use an electric heat gun, but on the go it's not really possible, so here I am using a flame to seal the quick connectors. Now we're ready to join the wires. After this, the door speaker should now work. Let's move on to the tweeters now. To ensure a better fit, I used the extra foam that came with the larger speakers to attach to the tweeters themselves so that they fit a lot tighter. You can use the same technique on the mount itself. If you did everything right, it should fit. If it doesn't fit, you may have to make some adjustments. Once the tweeter's in there, you can stuff the wiring and the high pass filter in there as well. Finally, you should be able to push the plastic cover back on. All right, let's move back to the door speaker. Before I reattach the door, I wanna add one more layer of insulation. What I have here is the 3M material Thinsulate. 
Finsulid is nice because it's both an acoustic and thermal insulator. Once I have it cut out, I can simply cut some holes for the speaker. When putting the door back on, we're just going to go with the same steps in reverse order. First, we're going to reattach this metal piece to the door. Three screws is all it takes. Next, we're going to fit the thinsulid that we just cut out into the frame of the door. It's going to be necessary to make adjustments at this stage. Here I'm using scissors to make space for that metal piece we just attached. Once that's done, go ahead and reattach the door panel. This will be more difficult than before because there's extra thickness from the thinsulate. Now screw in this torque screw you removed earlier, and then reattach the door handle. This is probably the most difficult part because you have to thread the door mechanism into the handle. But once you have that in, it's a simple matter of adding back those two torque screws from earlier. Finally, seal the sides of the door, both covers on the door, and this final panel, which happens to be the very first thing that we removed. All right, so that was the install process for how to install new speakers into the Ram ProMaster City. I hope it was helpful for those who want to do the install themselves, and also for those who are just interested in how something like this would go. So, what do I like and dislike? The audio sounds much clearer. Vocals sound better, instruments sound better, things like cymbal clashes and, and high frequency percussion sound a lot tighter. I also like that the Dynamat seems to reduce road noise when I'm driving. It's not all the way, but it does seem to make it better so that I can actually hear the music while I'm driving at 40 miles an hour or so. There are still some things that I need to work on. Road noise is still louder than I would like. I plan on taking out the front two seats and laying Dynamats all over the front cabin. I'm also going to do the same for the ceiling too. The second thing is that the speakers, while great at the frequencies that they produce, are only five and a quarter inch speakers, so they don't produce a lot of bass. So what I have already done is I've ordered a powered subwoofer that goes underneath my seat, and I'm hoping that that will solve the bass problem. So that's it. I hope that was helpful, and if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments section, and I'll get back to you.